This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and oh my god, it's a phone, right? There have been so few phones released in the past several months. Well, here we go with the LG G Flex 2. It's as curvy as ever. Call it the banana phone. Call it whatever you want. Kind of like a snowboarding thing, right? Anyway, there's a point to the curve. It is comfy against your face, fits the curve of your bum for you guys who like to keep these in your back pocket. And it's gotten a lot better. The first G Flex had mediocre specs and that really hurt. And they went with a six inch phablet design and that thing really did look like a surfboard clipped onto somebody's belt. 5.5 inches, nearly bezel-less design means it's very manageable size, it's very comfortable. Cutting edge Snapdragon 810 CPU inside 1080p OLED display. Not bad, we're gonna look at it now. So this is the LG G Flex 2, the second generation curvy flexible. Well, banana phone? I don't know. It's a lot smaller. It's a lot easier to handle. It's still a very glossy thing. Uh, the good thing is, though, it doesn't pick up fingerprints as much as the last generation one, which can look really gross really fast. Of course, you can wipe any of these down with a damp cloth, but it's nice if it doesn't look disgusting within five seconds of holding it. You can get it in a silvery gray or in this crazy flamenco red, volcanic red, depends on your carrier and who you're asking about what the name is going to be for this. And this is the Sprint version of the phone. AT&T will also offer it. As you might guess, the back is plastic, but here that's not supposed to be a dirty word because it's that self-healing molecular fancy plastic that is I'm attacking this with my fingernail. I have a pretty good fingernail there. It's not showing any marks. The idea is that you can scratch it and it will heal within about 10 seconds. With the original Flex, it took more like minutes to hours and some furious rubbing would speed things up. And I know some reviewers have said that they've gotten scratches on this. So far, I'm just carrying it in my pocket, not being careful with it. I really haven't gotten any scratches that haven't disappeared on it. So good times. And just to test that, well, here's a nice house key. Ooh. Well, wow, that's pretty bad. Pieces of the finish just came off. That's a little bit worrying. I really did scrape it. So you can probably see those scratches right there. Now let's see. We'll give it 10 seconds. We'll even hurry it up. I suspect that that one gouge is never going to come out, though. We'll see. If it does, I'm really, really impressed. 10 seconds. While we're waiting our 10 seconds to see if those scary scratches go away, we'll talk about what else is going on. LG likes to put the controls on the back. If you get along with that, you're going to love it. If you don't love it, well... And it's probably not the phone for you. I find it's pretty easy to get used to. The idea is with one hand, hand on the back like this, you're, it's going to be easier to hit the volume controls and the power button. Of course, avoid touching the camera lens. Speaking of the camera lens, the camera's really very good on this. We'll go into more detail about that. But the cover over the lens is really nasty for picking up glare and halo effects from the sun. So keep that in mind. Dual LED flash here, and it has laser autofocus, which is pretty cool and indeed does help focusing speeds. Speaker grill down here facing on the rear. How are our scratches doing? Oh, no, they're still there. Uh-oh, see them? There they are. We'll continue looking around the phone, and we'll check back with those. Oops, scratches. Micro USB down here. Headphone port down here on the bottom. Of course, there's no volume controls or anything on the side since it is all on the back side. Up top here, we have the IR window for the AV remote control, so you can control your home theater gear with that. And there's a microphone hole there. 5.5 inch P OLED display. That stands for plastic OLED because the substrate underneath is plastic. That's what allows them to curve it like this and to make it flexible. Now it has a special version of Gorilla Glass 3 on top of it, DuraGuard glass which should help with durability, certainly. And as with the previous Flex, you can put it on the table and you can flatten it out or you can try to do it. It's actually pretty rigid. I can't, and I have pretty strong hands. I can't flex it much, but you can see it's bending. There won't be any bend gates here. Let's put it on the table. Goodness knows the table might flex more than the phone. It's pretty flat there. And it bounces right back. So for those of you who like to carry your big phone in your back pocket, and perhaps you've cracked them before, had unfortunate things happen, this, this one should really hold up better. I haven't heard of many people managing to actually break their flex phones. And how are our scratches doing? Scratching? Well, that's another thing. Yeah. So deep key scratches, if you're being intentionally violent, if you carry bizarre things in your pockets, I mean, just your key being sideways against this won't do this. I was really gouging at it. So if, you, if you're really pretty violent with the phone, you can permanently scratch the back on that. We'll check back one more time before the review is done, though. 
So this is not a sealed body phone. The back cover is removable on it, and there is a little grab point over here. And it's a pretty good tight fit there, so it's easier if you work your fingernail around, if you have any fingernails that is, comes off, there it is. Curved battery underneath, this battery is not removable, there's a little screw actually holding it in, so yes, it is serviceable. I mean, it's just not something that you can pop out and pop in a, a spare easily. There's where the speaker is, obviously. This is the SIM card slot, and on top of it, there's a micro SD card slot that LG is, says is compatible with cards up to two terabytes. I don't have a two terabyte micro SD card. I bet you don't either, but uh, that would be a bit of future proofing there. And just to give you an idea of how, relatively speaking, petite this 5.5 inch phone is, I mean, LG did a great job with the LG G3, making it seem smaller or feel smaller than it is. Here is the Nexus 6. Next to, of course, it is bigger being a Nexus 6, but it's, it looks and feels wildly bigger, to be honest. And this curve really does help make it feel more face friendly. It doesn't feel awkward in the hand either. It feels very natural and nice to hold. I really enjoy the ergonomics of this phone, truth be told. And in the pocket, Forget an iPhone 6 Plus for me in my pockets. It just really didn't work at all. And this guy, not a problem. Not a problem at all. So up front here, we have our 5.5 inch, as I said, OLED display, 1080p resolution, 1920 by 1080. So much better than the 720p resolution of the original G Flex. It's nice, it's pleasant, it's colorful. There's actually some settings you can choose. It depends how AMOLED you want to have it look. If you want to have it natural, for example, standard is somewhere in between. Here is vivid, which is super contrasty and exaggerated colors. And then there's natural right there, which is closer to more of an IPS look. We'll go back to standard there. So it has pretty vivid colors. It may not be as in your face as some AMOLED displays, but it's not bad. As usual, LG gives you control over all sorts of stuff. Settings, you can choose your fonts, all sorts of things you've got million gesture based things that you can do. You've got the split window feature. Features have features just about. We have one handed operation here and that gets into what they've done with Android 5.01 Lollipop here. It is very heavily skinned. If you looked at this and you looked at the LG G3, you would say this is pretty much the same user experience. You almost can't tell you're running Lollipop here. Notifications, at least these look like the Google notification cards. We still have a lot of stuff going on and granted this is handy here, this quick access stuff. I don't think it needs to take up quite this much space though. And we have LG square icons. I'm sorry, aesthetically speaking, I don't like it. Maybe you do. That's just my opinion. It's kind of a little heavy handed. Now, since this is a Sprint phone and Sprint just loves blowware, all the icons on this screen, the only two things I have put on here is this benchmark folder I made and I put Asphalt 8 on to test gaming. All of this stuff is preloaded by Sprint. Oh, Sprint, please. It's too much. It's just way too much. We've even got multiple weather apps installed on here. Really, especially for more novice Android users, it's confusing enough when the first time you launch a web link and it asks you which web browser you want to use because the old WebKit web browser is on here, probably because Sprint can customize it and put doodads on it if they want. And you've got Chrome. So now you've got multiple photo viewers, multiple weather applications, and yeah. You get the idea. Happily, it's not slowing down the phone so much. I know some people have said that they thought it was bulky with some pre-release phones out of Korea. This is a release device and the performance on it is just fine. This is LG's own little notification system up here. It does obviously the weather and the time and it tries to tell you helpful things about the weather. It usually it says things like take a sweater, be mindful of the weather, whatever that means. I don't know. It's okay. But I like having the time and the weather up there so that's useful enough. Inside we have the 2 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 CPU. That's the new octa-core 64-bit CPU from Qualcomm and the fastest Snapdragon you can get. Now there was a lot of rumor and pitch about, well, gee, we hear that it overheats or it throttles or anything like that. We ran benchmarks on this over and over again repeatedly. That should get the phone pretty darn hot. This phone never got hot. Granted, yes, plastic doesn't get as hot as metal. If you had something like the HTC One M9, you might feel a little more heat, or even glass can, can convey some more heat. But no, it didn't get hot. It didn't throttle. It didn't do anything weird. We have not had any problems whatsoever. It is just a nice darn fast CPU. Inside we have Adreno 430 graphics, which Qualcomm claims it gives you 30-40% improvement in graphics speeds, and particularly in the benchmarks we did see graphics numbers being higher, whereas otherwise it's faster than the Snapdragon 805 quad-core, but not like, oh my god, fast compared to it. 
Our unit has 2 gigs of RAM, that's the Sprint version, and 32 gigs of storage. There probably will be variations on that. I know some units overseas are 3 gigs and 32 gigs. There'll be a 2 gig and 16 gig and so on. But Sprint version, 2 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage. AT&T will have this soon. We'll have to wait and see what they're offering. In addition to 4G LTE, the phone has dual band Wi-Fi 802.11ac, Bluetooth 4.1 NFC as well. As we said, it has that micro SD card slot for storage expansion. 3,000 milliamp battery in there. You'd think that that would be awesome, right? That's a pretty high capacity battery for a 1080p display and all that sort of thing. It's okay. The standby times are great on it. Light use is not too bad. But if you're doing something like playing a game, or even doing a lot of web browsing where you're tapping a lot of web links. Well, I noticed the battery goes down faster than expected. I really did have to charge it each night by the time I went to bed. Usually with a 3000 milliamp sort of family phone, I can get away with waiting until the next morning, even till noontime or so. Being an LG phone, it has all the neat features like the knock to wake. And let's turn this guy off just so we can see this. You do that to wake it up. And then they have this new thing, this glance thing, which is... I don't know how useful this is. You can just tap it to wake it up and see whatever notifications are. But you drag from the top, see? And you can kind of wee do this with it, okay? If you're really bored, it's something to do. Anyway, I'll show you the top area and any little notifications there. So how about calling in data? We'll run a, yet another UCLA speed test right now here in the Dallas area where Sprint has pretty good coverage. Their, their data network has improved. The signal bars and the, the decibel had definitely gone up. The data speed still for L LTE... Not really very impressive, as you can see there. That's not as strong as showing yet. But voice quality in this has been really very good on Sprint's network. And often we find their network previously had been a little voice challenge. Now, the coverage really has improved a lot, and that's going to help. But excellent voice phone there. Data speeds, that's what we're getting. So, yeah. I mean, but among Sprint phones, if you're a Sprint customer, certainly this one is no better, no worse than any other current Sprint LTE phone that's available on the market. As a voice phone, like I said, really very nice. How about benchmark results? Right here we have the 3D Mark score, which as you can see is 22,644 for the Ice Storm Test Unlimited. That is one of the best numbers we have ever seen. That, that's new Snapdragon 810 with the Adreno 430 is doing a good job there. Quadrant, 26,390. Typically we see Quadrant around 22 to 24,000 with the Snapdragon 805. So some improvement there, not huge. On Tutu actually now has a 64-bit test. If you have a 64-bit CPU, so you can run it in 32-bit or 64-bit, and they suggest that you might get a higher number with 64-bit. Actually, we got a lower number, 47,992 on the 64-bit test, but we got 49,344 on the 32-bit test. For Sun Spider, it scored 730. That's the JavaScript speed test where lower numbers are better. 500s are the very best that we see. 1,000 to 1,100 is not unusual. So that's a pretty decent test there. And that was using Chrome rather than the WebKit web browser. Chrome tends to register a little lower than the WebKit web browser. Geekbench 3, 1232 for the single core test. 3908 for the multi core test. So very good showing. It is a fast phone. No problems with that there. So let's test out the YouTube application. You can hear the built-in speaker. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it is yoga time again, actually, with a Lenovo Yoga. This is a Yoga 3, 14-inch. And it does well. I'm moving it around so you can see the glare or the lack of glare. Generally speaking, side to side. Notice it's not picking up much glare unless I move it way, way off angle like that. Speaking of viewing angles, they're pretty darn good there. Speaker is at about 60% volume there. It's okay. It's not fantastic. It's certainly not bad. But for video watching, this display is a bit more immersive. It's the 700 millimeter radius curve is supposed to match the curve on a 55 inch curved TV to reduce reflection and make you feel like you're a little bit more in the experience. It does the job. It's nice enough. I like it pretty well. Being that it's AMOLED, one thing I will say though is when, when brightness is turned up fairly high like it is now where it's 71%, colors look pretty good, but grays can look a little bit grainy or banded if you have the brightness set lower. And that's just the generation of AMOLED that this is working with. 
So how about the camera? One of the things we've liked about phones like the LG G3 is the camera quality has been very good. Same 13 megapixel camera with the Sony sensor in here. Optical image stabilization, which means if your hand shakes a little bit, like so, well, you still get a steady shot and video won't look so bouncy. This isn't going to save you from, from subjects that go running around like mad. It's just for your handshake kind of thing. Fast lens on the rear has auto HDR mode, can shoot 4K video as well. So all sounds pretty promising. Oh, and then there's laser autofocus and the dual LED flash. A lot of bells and whistles there. And 13 megapixels is plenty enough megapixels for a pretty sharp shot, even if you're zooming in. We have tap to focus here and you can use, yeah, it's, it's fast. It's very fast. They've toned down the settings here. You notice you got auto HDR on off, that sort of thing. It also gives you an explanation of that. Your resolution, we're going for 13 megapixel, which gives you the less widescreen variation. You can choose your photo and video resolutions right there. You can see we also have 120 frames per second slow motion video here. Settings, just brings up that right there. You got your grid if you want, self timer. You have gestures, voice commands, you can do the say cheese for the shutter kind of thing. So let's look at the pictures. Obviously the bath toy is not going to be very exciting. There is a challenging shot, a lot of contrast there, reflective water. It did a pretty decent job of that. And as we zoom in, there's a reasonable amount of detail there, all things considered. Flower shot in high contrast setting. Now that's pretty challenging. You can see it got a lot of color, a lot of detail. The rocks, for the most part, didn't white out. Even with that one, you can still see some of the speckling on the rocks there. The detail on the Snapdragons for a camera phone, that's, that's really, really very pretty. Aha! Uh -huh. Now, this is what I was talking about with the rear lens cover. That plastic cover there, it just picks up light glare. So the sun was behind the subject there, and you can see it causes this hazing over here. That's not so great. And look at that. You can actually do a very interesting lighting effect if you want to take advantage of that poor quality rear lens cover. Uh, yeah, you get the idea there. Again, nice colors, sharp clarity. And how about a dark shot? Well, it's a challenging one because the monitor is pretty well lit. And here's Where's Waldo, only it's Where's the Cat. Zoom in. Considering it was a very dark room with the only thing really providing light is the monitor there. That's actually not too bad, but it's not a super duper low light camera. I like it much better for outdoor shots. Second shot of our assistant video editor. And now we'll look at 4K video. And it really is very smooth. I'm terrible with holding a camcorder smoothly when I'm shooting video. So they actually did a nice job keeping that stable and not looking too jittery. And if you want to see 1080p, checking out the adjustment to contrast. Right there, doing a pretty good job. See the light haze. Ah, light refraction on the lens cover. But other than the rear lens cover reflecting way too much light, I have to say it's a pretty darn good camera here. And now we're going to test out Asphalt 8 Airborne. It's a very demanding racing game here, doing the nice Nevada track with our awesome Dodge Dart. And we'll see how it plays. Hint, it's going to be good. For something like this, as accelerometer based, where you tend to move the phone around a lot, I really do notice the reduction in glare from my vantage point when playing the game, which does make it more enjoyable. Excellent, really nice and smooth there. It feels a little weird using a curvy phone when moving it around like this, so it kind of changes the, your sensation of rotation, but it's good. Nitro boost, not a problem. So it plays games quite well. This is going to be one of the faster phones on the market, along with the Samsung Galaxy S6, the HTC One M9, and the LG G4, whenever that's available. So that's the LG G Flex 2 playing Asphalt 8. And lastly, if you're wondering what web browsing is like on a 5.5 inch curved display, here is our website, mobiletechreview.com, and 
powerful desktop view right there. It looks just fine. It scrolls nicely. It behaves well. It looks pretty darn good. So all in all, I have to say, I really like the LG G Flex too. It's ergonomic. It's comfortable. It resists breaking by about 30% better than the average phone or so they claim. Yeah, I'm bending on it. I'm doing nasty things to it. Obviously, you can scratch the back if you're a gorilla like I was and attack it totally with your keys. Let's give one final check to those mean scratches I put there. They're still there. If you move it in the light, you can see them a bit. They are actually disappearing some, though. Hmm, interesting that. Anyway, overall, very fast phone does not get too hot. Nice display on it. I enjoy the ergonomics of the curve, and it makes video watching and gaming a little bit more enjoyable. As to whether curved phones are the future, it's really hard to say, but I, you know, I could imagine it. Straight slab phone just seems kind of a little bit boring, sure, just because it's more common, and a little bit less comfortable once you get used to this. So that's the LG G Flex 2, obviously, in bright Flamenco Red, whatever you want to call it, depending on your carrier, it's going to have a different name. And this is the Sprint version. Like I said, in the U.S., it'll also be available on AT&T. And I know the Flex got a bad name from the first time around, but this is actually a very nice phone. Obviously, it's very different. It's kind of eye-catching if you like an attention-grabbing phone. But it's ergonomic. It's pretty darn durable. It's fast. It has a pleasing display and a good camera. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.